Activating Sharp Mini Late Models about to go green as they head through three and four, approaching the start flag. On the front straightaway, green flag goes in the air as it is Robbie and Josh Outman side by side into turn one. But by the time they get there, Robbie and he has got the race lead. But Outman, oh, he oversteps and he slides. Trouble in turn two, and it's a big pile up coming off of corner number two. A couple of cars hit very hard. You got CJ Sherwood, he's involved. Robbie and he's involved. The 80, uh, the 93 that is of Kyle Coons is involved, but a huge pileup off turn number two brings out the yellow flag. And the 9S of CJ Sherwood all beat up, but still out there in eight as the field approaches the start flag position in turn number four. Green flag goes in the air. We'll try it again after that wreck that happened on turn number two on lap number one. It's Rob Eaton this time on the restart who checks out all by himself. Nothing to worry about out back for now as now all of a sudden off of turn two, here comes the 15B of Brandon Blosser right there all over the back bumper as they head through three and four. Off of turn number two, down the back straightaway, Robbie in the race leader behind him. It's Brandon Blosser, and now here's Jesse Isidore. Isidore was able to park it in victory lane a couple of times here last year at MCR, and he is looking poised to do it again. But he's got two front runners in front of him that he's got to get around. Off of turn number two, he pulls right up in the back bumper of Blosser. Can't get anywhere to make a move, so he'll stay tucked in line as he heads into three and four. Blosser really tail happy off turn number four that last time by. That opened up the door momentarily for Isidore, but he couldn't complete the pass. So he'll tuck back in line. Still, it is Rob Eaton out front and pulling away now from the two behind him. Everybody else behind him, single filed, stretched out. The race for the lead, though, starting to tighten up. Just as I said, Eaton was starting to pull away. Blosser has cut into that advantage. It's about three or four car lengths of separation between the top two as they head into three and four. Rob Eaton continuing to lead the way. Brandon Blosser right there in his tire tracks trying to find a way to get up to the back bumper and compete for the race lead. But right now, Rob Eaton has other ideas. He has maintained that two car length advantage as he's slinging the machines through one and two. And now a great launch off the corner by Blosser. It was a car length momentarily, but still it is Rob Eaton as they head off of turn four. Field will stay single file for the moment as Isidore continuing to hound the back bumper of Blosser. And now side by side off turn four. Oh, they make contact in turn one up the racetrack they go. Isidore and Blosser make contact going into turn one. They both slide up the track. That opens up the door for Dale Haynes. He slides by in the second. Chris White slides by in the third. And this allows Eaton to pull away farther with the race lead. Rob Eaton continuing to show the way. Dale Haynes now in position number two after the contact between Isidore and Blosser. Isidore was able to complete the pass on Blosser. He rides in fourth now, but he has got a lot of ground to make up after that incident in turn one. Riding in fourth, long way behind Rob Eaton. And now Rob Eaton might be having some company knocking on his doorstep here momentarily. Dale Haynes has closed the gap. He has shrunk that lead and he is closing in on the race leader.
Through one and two, the field goes again. Dale Haynes, lap after lap, continuing to close in on the race leader. Consistency kills. It was about six or seven car lengths between the two. Now it's down to three. Off of turn number four, onto the front straightaway. Dale Haynes is there. The question is, does he have enough time? Two laps to go was just given at the line. Dale Haynes recognizes that, and he'll throttle down off turn number two. Three car lengths between the top two, and here comes Chris White. He wants a piece of the action. Off of turn number four, shaping up to be a good one. Final time around McKean County Raceway for the Sharp Mini Late Models. Robbie in trying to hold on as now Chris White being under attack from Isidore. He'll get a great launch as Haynes falls back off of turn four. It's gonna be the 82 of Rob Eaton who scores the win in the Beaver Trucking and Excavating Shark Mini Late Models on Jim Duffy Memorial Night. As it looks like the helmet is off, belts are off as well, and here he comes, give it up for the 82 of Robbie in. Well, Rob, congratulations on the victory. I'll hand you this as you earned that one. You hopped out of the car, heard the words you're saying, you're getting too old for this, but you didn't look it out there on the track, man. You were flying. You got it in the victory lane. How'd you do it? Oh, uh, we've just been working on the car. We changed set up tonight, and it seems to be working a lot better. Um, Kind of a special race. I used to work on Jim's car, Robbie Dickinson. We all uh, spent a lot of time here. Obviously an emotional night for you, and that goes back to working on his car. You had, you had to race here. You have a lot of memories at this track, I'm sure. Where's this rank at the top for that list? Real good, real good. <laughs> Congratulations on the victory. Thank you. One more time for Robbie in.